Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be looking in on everybody's favorite 55 gallon worm bin blue. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a evaluation which is going to inv involve doing a little bit of a harvest so that we can make room so that we can move things over. If you were here last time, you would know that I'm having a hard time keeping up with Blue. He's cycling through so much stuff so fast that every three weeks has not been good enough and we need to start doing it every two weeks so that we can keep up with them so they don't go hungry. So first things first, I'm going to do a bit of a harvest and try and get rid of some of the, the finished castings here. All that will go back into the business end when we feed uh, next time. So the fact that things don't get done in one cycle is totally fine for me because I will just put them right back in to the business end and they can do it again. I don't know if your parents ever told you that. If you didn't finish your dinner, it'll be in the refrigerator for you for your next meal, but um, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Not getting a huge harvest. But what I am doing is I am getting the larger chunks out of the finished part of the bin. And then that way the, uh, the area where all the worms are and uh, possibly some new nutrients to make this stuff more interesting will, uh, you know, cause the worms to want to go through it. I'm not going to do a lot here. I'm just doing the first couple of uh, handfuls off the top. I have been putting the other bins as they get harvested on top of blue because he's got a bigger surface area and that way they can dry out you know right now with it being um, summer it is very very uh, warm and high humidity in the basement so the castings are having a hard time drying out so they need all the help they can get and blue has offered to help more like I volunteered him that he was going to help but you know he doesn't talk back which is lovely Okay, I think that's one layer off the whole top of this part of the finished area. Yep, yeah, and I probably got, you know, maybe not quite a gallon of castings, so that's good. I'm going to put that in my finished castings bin. It has still been too hot to start my uh, fall garden, so I'm still kind of in a holding pattern for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig down here as deep as we can go into the the business you know the finished end of blue and you can see there's a lot of crumbles here um, just stuff that is either too wet to be uh, finely sifted or maybe it's not done so we're just gonna make sure that the moisture is completely homogenous so that when I do get in here I come in you know without you guys probably once a week and try and get a little bit of a harvest out of this bin just so that I can keep it moving and it's getting a little clumpy at the bottom the moisture is is much more higher at the bottom so it is kind of important that I get in there and uh, make sure that it's not compacted all the weight of all these castings on top is probably what's compacting it more so than the moisture so if your bins are super, you know, shallow, you know, maybe it is not as important to do this fluffing step. But when I have bins that are, you know, this deep, they're a foot deep, um, you know, the chances that it'll be um, come compacted like this is pretty high. So I go ahead and try and do this about once a month. We did a little bit last time that we were in here three weeks ago or uh, not three weeks ago, uh, 14 days. But we didn't go all the way down to the bottom, we just did a little bit. And you can see there are still worms in here. Not a whole lot though. They do migrate uh, down towards the end where there is tasty food. All right, so we're just gonna keep going. So the continuous migration of the wedge method uh, does take a little bit of the stress of trying to migrate worms out. Uh, if you watched the last video 
about my Eat My Short Spin. Uh, I was having quite a bit of a problem getting them to harvest because the, the casting stayed very, very wet. And of course, the worms don't want to migrate if everything is comfortable. Sometimes I think the moisture content of the bin is probably just as important as if there is tasty food. So the worms won't get out if you, uh, if the bin is still a very, very good moisture. So that is one of the other ways that I can make sure the worms continue to move is by continually fluffing and making sure that things are dry so the worms want to get out. Um, kind of like that. All right, so I'm gonna remove my tarp here and we will start looking at this middle portion of the bin. So this part here is completely finished. So from the seam here over is finished, hasn't been fed in six or eight months. But this part here is where the business end is. So this is the middle. So this is where worms have had food in the last three or four months. So you would expect to see a much higher concentration of worms in this portion than you did over there. And similarly, you also would expect to find, you know, worm balls, some food that's not been digested, which we keep kicking down. But as you can see, there is a much higher concentration of worms here, even though the moisture is similar um, because the food was most recently here. So kind of flipping through, taking the big articles out and moving them to the end, making sure these guys have enough uh, moisture or not moisture air the air getting the air to this portion of the bin as well so it's it's an evaluation a lot of people you know really do wish there was a hard fast rule about worm farming but the truth of the matter is most of it is going to be um, evaluation your your bins will be completely different in uh, northern Scotland or India or wherever you are. Um, I've seen I have, you know, people that watch my channels from Korea, Vietnam, India, um, all over the place. So I can't really tell you 100% do this because this is the perfect way to do things. Uh, mostly because it'll be different. Your moisture is different. Your temperature is different. Your weather is different even possibly the stock of worms that you got were different. In here we have about 20 pounds of the Red Wiggler Blue Worm European Nightcrawler mix, but for the re you know for real purposes this is about 50% Red Wigglers. Um, in the summertime I think the Blue Worms get a little bit higher in population and then in the wintertime the European Nightcrawlers get a little higher in population simply because of their preferred um, breeding temperatures. Red Wigglers are pretty standard all the way through, so I think that's why their numbers stay pretty constant no matter what time of year it is, no matter what kind of food, and no matter, you know, what temperature. So let me slide you down so that we can look through the business end of the spin. If you're liking this video, why not give it a muddy thumbs up? And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Okay, so the last time we looked in here, there was quite a bit of mushroom uh, that were growing. I don't see any of the mushrooms anymore. So whatever that was must have uh, run its course. We also did notice that with the mushrooms there was mold. I don't know if they were independent or if they were related, but I did notice that having mold did make things drier. So do make a note of that, that if your bin is moldy, you might need to add moisture because the mold does take up the moisture. So last time they were fed tomato, garlic, plant clippings, and before that they got that mixture of grain, etc., from when Cece moved. So we're just gonna start slowly moving things over. I think I'm getting into the most recent feeding, which did have some eggshells in it that were not ground up. And so just looking through here to see if I can find some food. I'm not finding anything yet, but again, you're seeing a much higher concentration of worms in this area. The moisture is much warmer, or uh, the moisture is warm. 
the moisture is higher and the food content is higher. So this is where the party is at. And one of the things I do love about this bin is that I can totally, literally get into it. It doesn't look like they got into that mango yet. Um, I think there's a certain therapy uh, of being able to dig in the dirt and uh, really getting into it. I know a lot of people think it's gross, but the truth of the matter, this is kind of therapy. I don't have to think about things a whole bunch. I can just come in here and uh, work on the bins and kind of just let my, my mind go. And in this day of all kinds of things that are overly dramatic from, you know, politics to everything, it's nice to just let your, let your brain go and uh, just worry about taking care of your worms. So we're still moving over. This is the middle part that was probably fed the grain, etc. the time before. Then we're going to get into the most recent feeding and we might get a worm ball. I'm seeing some garlic. I don't know how long it'll take for garlic to get, but my seed garlic went bad. Ooh, I'm starting to smell that garlic too. Not bad, just super garlicky. So kind of moving anything that's not finished. Here's some tomatoes. There's your daily dose of forbidden food. You know, the worms are purposefully eating a tomato. It's not hurting them. Um, I'm always preaching about, you know, don't put things in the garbage because you think your worms won't be able to eat it. They'll get around to it sooner or later. The helpers in the bin oftentimes will get into things for them. Uh, so I think a lot of people baby their worms a little bit too much. All right, I'm trying to get to this middle part. Here we go. So the moldy garlic, it doesn't, it's still kind of hollow. They'll get around to it sooner or later. The leaves that we gave them from the um, trimming of the avocado tree are already dead. Sometimes they stay green in here for a really long time when I feed plant clippings. Wow, the garlic smell is a lot though. No vampires in this basement. Well, not anymore. I don't know. If there were. Uh, let's so the roots and everything haven't been eaten. Oops, I kind of felt like there was a worm ball there. Yeah, I probably disturbed it. Darn it. Okay, well, we're getting air to it. I can hear those eggshells. Can you hear that? So put in the comments below, you know, what foods don't you feed your worms and, and why not? Because I'm slowly getting to where I feed mine just about anything. Um, because they have proven over and over that, at least in a decent sized bin like this, you can feed them darn near anything and they will eventually, between them and their buddies in the bin, they'll get around to it sooner or later. So yeah, put, put in here, are you squeamish about feeding certain things to the bin and, and what is your reason behind that? Um, and, you know, let me know, has any of my experiments changed your mind? Have you thought, you know, maybe I can feed all these different things and not put them in the garbage? Okay, still doing my evaluation, putting the more finished food down to the end piling up my in process usually my my middle line here where the seam is is kind of where I'm shooting for to pile things up to and uh, then the migration can, can the ongoing migration can continue so that the worms that are over here um, are more enticed to come this away with all of this stuff waiting for them all of the goodies all right, more eggshell. Now these eggshells didn't have eggs in them. They were just regular kitchen scrap eggshells that didn't get ground up. I think we go through about a dozen of eggs, not a dozen, four dozen eggs a week. So sometimes I get overwhelmed with uh, even um, 
ground up eggs and I don't really need need them <laughs> to be have more ground up eggs. Okay, so then we're getting down to the bottom of the bin where sometimes we will see a worm ball just because it's such high moisture. So, a kind of a diffuse worm ball. It smells celery too. I don't remember feeding celery. Oop, cork. Um bonsai screen. All right, I'm going to lay that on top so that they can work their way out of it. There's no use trying to force worms through anything. They will just get damaged. So looking at this, I think I still see some of that grain. But what's really amazing is that the worms and the bin critters have eaten everything to the point. Oh, that's an avocado pit. Nice. They've eaten everything to the point where it doesn't smell, um, which is really interesting to me. I mean, in theory, something squishy like this that is rotten, basically, um, you would think that it would smell, but whatever it is that makes things smell also um, must be what the worms and, and their friends like to eat. So I always find that interesting as well. So we'll turn over the very end here where we put that egg carton. And we've got all kinds of little wormies in there. And you can tell one side had the bedding and one side had the uh, moisture from the bin. And it looks like the, the bedding was not touched. All right, so we're getting all of our, our large stuff here that we're gathering at the end. So if anybody has a 55 gallon bin too, let me know. Do you run it the same way I do or do you run it differently? Put that in the comments. I always like to hear other people's opinions and, and ways of doing things. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm just taking you along on my journey. I try to help people, you know, avoid mistakes I've made, um, which is part of my goal, you know, to keep things out of the landfill, but also teach people what I have learned from so many other worm farmers on YouTube and in books. So there we go. Blue is indeed needing to get harvested some more. I'm gonna have to come in here more frequently because we're running out of room. Ugh. All right, so now that we've come to the end, let's get some bedding and see what we've got to feed them. It's another forbidden food. Hold still. This is a one gallon bowl to give you an idea. It's about four liters. Um, for how much bedding I put in the bottom of there, and let's get them their food. We have a couple of things. Not all of them are forbidden. This one is pineapple and some tomato. So, I think somebody said that I need to put this going upwards, so maybe the worms will grow me a pineapple. They often grow me other things, so maybe they can grow me a pineapple tree. That would be kind of awesome. I also have something super weird that I've never fed before. Um, in anybody who really uh, likes cooking Mexican food will notice this as chicharron. Sorry for but butchering how it's supposed to be pronounced, but the point was to I was going to make tacos out of this and it got put into the back of the cabinet and got lost. So it makes me sad because this was not cheap and it, it doesn't come easy around where I live. You don't normally find this, but I did have the uh, honor of working with many, many people that are from Mexico that taught me how to cook different kinds of food. And I was wanting to try chicharron tacos. So anybody from the Southwest or from Mexico probably knows what that is. And uh, are probably cringing at the fact that I just threw $10 worth of, of uh, pork rind kind of stuff in a worm bin. It hurts me too, because I really would have liked to have those tacos. All right, and then they're gonna get some more bedding. So again, about another gallon on top here for them. If you wanna go back and watch, binge watch all of the blues videos, I have a playlist right over here. Now, I have started putting the YouTube's recommendation for videos over here because they know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. So go ahead and watch this video over here if you're not interested in seeing more blue today. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.